What is good, Tesla family? It's Ray J back with another video. And this one will break down what's going on in Tesla stock, what you should be watching for moving forward. I'm also going to talk about SPY and the QQQ, break down what the technicals are telling us, what the data is telling us for the day, how earnings are looking, and some very important levels we have to be watching for as the option chain has been adjusted a bit on SPY. Before I break anything down about all this information, before I talk about what's going on with the markets, let me just say a couple of things. I'm personally not a financial planner, so make sure you take none of this as financial advice. And also, if you guys can, please check out the Weeble link, which is down below and in the description. If you sign up for Weeble, the link down below and deposit any amount of money into the account, you are guaranteed up to 12 free stocks. The offer ends very soon, so check it out before they run out. With that side of the way, let's get on with the video. Looking at Tesla's things up about 1.1% in the pre-market, but still not looking that strong compared to the market because if you look at SPY, SPY is still trying to break to the upside, break new highs of the day. Whereas Tesla started pumping in the morning and now it's trying to decline as time is going on. So it's still looking a little bit weaker, but the question is what levels should you be watching for to determine which way this thing is going to move? And I'm going to answer that in just a couple of minutes. Let's first talk about earnings. Just as a reminder, we had Capital One yesterday, and then we have American Express and just a couple of others like CSX all coming out for today. And so far, the majority of them have been beats overall so if you look at like american express even though they are down in the pre-market they actually did better than it wasn't really like that great for them overall it's kind of like mixed but pretty good on revenue i, I believe it was that so not bad overall but auto nation actually did pretty well beating on expectations csx did uh okay because they missed on revenue but beat on eps and Capital One did do very, very well. They did better than expected overall. So the majority of these have been relatively good. Uh, PPG, PPG Industries ended up doing quite well uh, for the second quarter. Uh, despite that, pretty good stuff. So the majority of these earnings have been pretty decent. Most of them are just beats. So that's part of why the market is trying to hold up in the pre-market. But there was something that changed on SPY, which I'll talk about in just a few minutes. Uh, looking at today right now we're on cloud nine meaning that the dow jones is up for the ninth straight day there is short supply right now in the real estate sector as sales were down 3.3 percent for the month of june and when it comes to ai commitments we are starting to see more and more companies that are going to be working on the technology security and transparency and development of the ai sector and this is actually has to do with lots of new commitments set by big companies such as meta microsoft google and amazon and besides that there have been some cargo delays for many airlines so that's about it for now in terms of like big news for today I just want to add on now that there has, there has been some adjustments made to SPY. Just like before, we have about 1.3 or very close to that million, 1.3 million calls expiring and about uh, one, uh, not one, 3.43 million of the puts expiring or something like that. So the majority of positions are going to be puts, over 3 million puts and over 1 million calls. And there's a 2.67 put to call ratio. And so far, the market is still holding up. But on the option chain, there was a quick change that happened to SPY. Let me just bring this up for you guys. Uh, on the call side, we're starting to see a lot more open interest and volume coming into that uh 455 area to 456 around this area we saw some big increases especially today you could see the open interest went up like crazy for 456 however on the put side it's basically the same with 450 seeing a very significant amount of changes to the open interest we saw another 12,000 in open interest so 55,000 in open interest and about 179,000 on the volume so that tells me that if we're bearish today we're going to be watching 450 on spy if we do break below like the low of the day yesterday for example if we're bullish we're going to be watching this 455 to 456 area they both have relatively high uh, open interests especially on the 456 strike so there has been a change we saw a lot more of these positions being bought uh and this data just came out today so it's just worth noting now looking at tesla however i just want to note that tesla shares are down on the margins that were getting very slim and they're, they're, this article is saying that there's cybertruck concerns i'm not really seeing that they're just saying it's because of the cybertruck having a prototype but i don't really see that as the truth because right now most people are not really that concerned about the Cybertruck, I would say. I would say more people are excited, if anything, about that. There's also news that came out about how Tesla taps the Biden tax credits to offset the EV price cuts. So once again, some pretty decent news overall. Nothing too negative from Tesla so far from what I'm reading. So what am I seeing for Tesla? Here's the thing about Tesla. Tesla is very, very tight right now. It's getting very, very tight at the time I'm recording this. If you want to be bullish on Tesla, you need to see this thing get above 268. If it manages to break the high it made right here, this thing has the potential to fly into the 270s, 272, 275, those levels become possible. However, if Tesla fails to do so, okay, you're going to be watching 
264.5 to 265. The entire zone right there. Watch that very carefully. We need to see Tesla hold it because if Tesla breaks below this support, it's going to likely retest 262, if not fill this gap down to about 260. There's this big gap that's left from the pre market. Uh, this basically happened during the pre-market as we gapped up from the after hours yesterday. There's a big gap that's down here. So I'm going to be watching this carefully. And Tesla, if anything, it's not looking that strong right now. If you look at it, it made this high and starting to decline a bit. So, so I'm going to be looking for a potential pop in the morning and see this thing just continuing to trade sideways. And one of these directions is going to break most likely. It's going to be stuck between uh, 264.5 to 268 around that area for now. And one of these directions will break, in my opinion. Whichever one breaks will determine which way it goes. If Tesla wants to balance, it is a possibility. If it doesn't, then once again, there's this big gap down here. So be well aware of that. I'm going to be unbiased in this one. Just talk about how both of these are still very possible. But it is looking a little bit weak in the pre-market compared to the market so far. So just be open-minded. Watch for confirmation just to be safe. And always remember that for SPY, we did see a big adjustment being made to the options chain spy is currently at 454.5 455 looks like it's very imminent in this inverse hand shoulders structure but the question is will we continue to break out or are we going to come down to this gap because there's a big gap on spy left down here around 452 and here's your answer if we manage to break 455 if we're going to we're going to be testing this most likely if we break the high from yesterday, we have the potential to try to push up for four, five, six. That's where we had a lot of those options being bought all of a sudden on the call side based off the open interest. So that's a big change that happened. Make sure you watch this four, five, six level very carefully. But here's the thing. There's a big but. If the market gets a big rejection, right? Because as of right now, uh, I'd be very careful with it. Uh, there's going to be a lot of trickery with all the options expiring. And there's a possibility that's right here. All of these puts, all of these put holders are going to fight back and try to get their puts in the money, at least to some degree. And we might see the bears try to fight back too, because there's so many options expiring. All right. So if that were to happen, even if we fall below like 454, that's not really the end of the world for us. If this thing breaks below 453, if that happens, there's a good chance it's going to sink down to fill this gap and come all the way down to 452, if not lower. And it could even drop down to 450 in that case. That's going to become a lot more possible if we do somehow see a big rug pull. Okay, so you're going to be watching 453 and then 455. The entire zone, we're kind of stuck there. Whichever direction breaks will determine the bigger move. I'm going to be in the middle in terms of my analysis because, once again, things adjusted overnight. And we are gapping up like I predicted, but could we fall as well? Uh, I did believe that was very possible yesterday. I still think it is. But just to be safe, we have to watch for confirmation and try to be unbiased when looking at the market and let the price action tell you what's going to happen. All right, so I want to make that clear. Right now, there you know there are big changes may, being made, and for the triple Q, it's also very interesting. There's a big gap that formed in the pre market. It's by about two to three dollars. The thing about that is, with this gap over here, you're going to be watching. Do we break down just like Spire? Are we going to continue going for resistance? Watch three eighty. If we break three eighty, we could push up for three eight two. But if the opposite happens, if we get a big rejection in the market, the market starts sinking. You're going to be watching. 378 as our support if that fails us our major support the most important support is actually around this 378 area 377.5 to 378 around that zone if that fails us this thing's gonna get rug pulled all the way down to the 376s and if that fails us like i said before if we break the lows from yesterday we're gonna go all the way down to 373 at this point if it does break these lows okay so be very careful with it there is a bearish divergence in the process of developing, but there's no confirmation of it actually playing out right now. So like I said before, just watch the price action, see if we get a rejection or not, and watch if we could break 380. If that breaks, we could turn bullish. 382 becomes possible. If we fail to do so, 378 to 377.5 is going to be our zone of support. If that fails us, we're going to see a big rug pull and the market's going to come down. All right, it is a big options expiration day, so be prepared for anything. Let the price action tell you. Yes, we're gapping up like I predicted yesterday, but I'm not sure about the rug pull right now because we did see a big change in the options chain. So I'm going to be open-minded and be very unbiased when saying it. So watch these levels carefully, especially for Tesla. If you look at Tesla, it's still trying to hold up. We're, we're going to be watching. Does Tesla break below gap support? Does Tesla continue going? Watch these levels carefully. And with that said, I thank you all so much for listening. All right. Tesla to the moon is long term is still incredibly bright despite these potential signals. And peace out.